So, is God dysfunctional? Does He manipulate our emotions in order to get His way? That is what we're going to explore here in this video. Now, my name is Charles, and this is a simple, not shallow video. A video for those who want a deeper faith, not a confusing one. And that is what our name is all about, keeping faith in Christ simple. Well, simple enough that a child like myself can understand it, and yet not so shallow that when the storms of life hit, that our faith is forced to run aground. Indeed, we want our faith to be like a very good cup of coffee. Simple, strong, full of flavor, and richly satisfying. Huh. Mm. That, richly satisfying. So here we go. Now, as I was thinking about this topic, I found it truly amazing that the spiritual life is so greatly reflected in real everyday life events. Well, for instance, the other day, I had cause to take note of a young lady not being interested in a certain young man. Well, to put it simply, he wanted to take her on a date, and she was not interested, not in the least. Which is all pretty straightforward. Interest by one does not have to equate to interest in the other, by the other rather, right? But this story is not about this couple. It's about us relating to God and His love. So, boy meets girl, girl couldn't care less, and the boy lets it go. Now, here's the interesting thing. He is still very interested in her, and yet, being honest with himself, he admits that she is not interested in him, and she has left no indication that she ever would be. See, this honesty has left him in a very interesting frame of mind. For now, he very willingly leaves her alone because he knows she does not want anything to do with him on that level. Oh, he is still desirous of her becoming interested in him, and he might, you know, from time to time, float out and invite her away. However, he respects and honors her wish to have nothing to do with him now. And he believes that it would be very wrong of him to force his attentions upon her. Indeed, if he were to do so, you and I would call him something much worse than a jerk, would we not? Now, I can hear you asking already. I can hear you saying, Okay, Charles, I thought you said that this was not about this young couple. So why are you still talking about them? Well... It's just that, is it not strange that we often expect God to do what we would blame somebody else for doing? Now track with me a moment. See, God, for some very strange reason, one only known to Himself, wants a relationship with each and every one of us. You, me, that dweeb next door, all of us. And yet, well, he leaves it up to us whether a relationship is started or not. Oh, and don't misunderstand me. He sends out all the invites, and he is the one who makes the initial overtures. And yet, he will not force anything. He will not push. If you say no, no it is. He honors your choice. Such is the love and the respect that he has for you. And yet... At the end of all things, there are only two possible destinations left. One that leaves us in His presence, and one that does not. One which, in which we have to relate to Him for all eternity, and one where we never will. In other words, there is heaven and there is hell. If, well, like the girl in our story, you tell Him no, you want nothing to do with him here, he will not force himself upon you there. For, you know, how could he be holy or, or anything other really than a manipulative dirtbag if he were to use your disadvantage, your death, against you and force you into a relationship that you did not want? And yet, sometimes it sounds like this is exactly what we want. I mean, you hear it all the time. 
Do whatever you want here, for God is love. He won't hold anything against you or send you to hell. I mean, how could a loving God do that? Everyone gets into heaven no matter what. But honestly, what is that but an unwitting desire for God to force a relationship upon you? I mean, if you have said no to Him here all your life, do you really want Him to force Himself upon you and live with Him forever? Why cast God as such a manipulative lowlife, one who forces us against our wishes to relate to Him in the afterlife? For if we want nothing to do with Him here, why would we want to be forced into dealing with Him there? Why would we desire Him to dishonor our choices and force us to live with Him there? Manipulation by the one and the desire to be dishonored by the other does have a name. It is dysfunction. See, and I find that there is more than enough dysfunction in this world, don't you? Shouldn't heaven be a better place than that? And the good news is that God is truly loving and not dysfunctional. He will honor your choices to relate to Him or to not. So choose today and choose well. Oh, and by the way, I am speaking to the folks who call themselves Christians and nobody else. This whole video is strictly applying to Christian people. Not who you had in mind? We'll have to explore that connection next time. So what do you think? Tell me in the comment section below. Also in the description box below, I will list all the Bible passages that I referenced in the order that I referenced them. That way, you can check me out to make sure I'm not making any of this up and that I'm not way out in left field for, while I am left-handed, I really don't like being stranded out in left field. It's a very lonely place. <laughs> Anyway, if you like this video, click that like, the subscribe button, and tag that great notification bell that pops up and tell YouTube that you want to be notified each time a new video is posted. Also, 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 very exciting, we now have a podcast version of this video. If you'd like to take a podcast version with you, wherever you want to go, simply go to simplenotshallow.com and you can download it there. Or Go to the podcast service of your choice, you know, Stitcher, Spotify, iTunes, whichever you like to use, and subscribe to the Simple Not Shallow podcast. Thank you for taking the time to listen. Yes, thank you. Thank you very, very much. <laughs> Ooh. And I'll catch you next time.